Welcome to the Healthcare IT Today CIO podcast. I'm John Lynn, the founder and chief editor at Healthcare IT Today, and I'm excited to bring you the most practical healthcare CIO insights and perspectives. We know your job is challenging and we want to help you be more successful. And our guest today is Carol Boston Fleshauer. She's chief clinical officer at Banyan Medical Systems. Welcome, Carol. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to spend time with you this afternoon. Delighted, uh, delighted to be with you. Definitely. And I'm excited to have you here. Uh, we haven't had nearly enough nurses. So there's my call for more nurses to come on the CIO podcast. So I'm glad to have you here. And I'm sure every nurse is as well. But uh, before we dive into the topic today, tell us a little bit about yourself and Banyan Medical Systems. You bet. Well, first and foremost, um, you're right. I am a registered nurse, having worked in a variety of care delivery roles over the years, also serving various leadership positions in various organizations as well. Most recently as the chief nursing officer of the advisory board. The advisory board is a um, global membership services and research firm for healthcare industry stakeholders, including provider organizations and systems. So I come to this conversation with having walked in the shoes of a nurse, right? (laughs) And direct knowledge of the challenges that today's nurses face. I'm excited to begin my new role. Uh, as chief clinical officer at Banyan Medical Systems, which again is the first company to invent what is now called virtual nursing. I should say right up front, there are lots of virtual nursing models that are out there, but Banyan's virtual nursing model has three components that I think are important for listeners to understand. Obviously, we start with state-of-the-art technology, but we also include a very comprehensive change management process to help staff literally embrace virtual support as part of their care team, as well as we have an extensive pool of experienced registered nurses that can serve as virtual nurses as well. But more specifically, this model is built to have certain types of nursing functions that don't require in-person contact actually assumed by experienced nurses that are connected remotely. Things like admissions, discharges, medication lists, some documentation, even patient education, with permanently stationed two-way cameras and audio, and then with in-room nurses having much more time to support direct care. This is so helpful for today's nursing workforce that is universally burdened with a lot of administrative work as they work so hard to care for really sick sick patients. The permanently stationed cameras, which is really interesting, as well as the two-way audio, not only allow virtual staff and in-room staff to see and talk and connect with each other whenever it's needed, but also connectivity with the patients and families as well. So bottom line, the virtual nursing model designed by Bandit is for nurses, and healthcare professionals to optimize the time of the bedside registered nurse, getting rid of all of that administrative stuff that overburdens registered nurses so that again, they've got time for direct care. Results, I think, speak for themselves. Not only are quality and safety metrics improved, Banyan's clients report improvements in nurse satisfaction, decreased overtime, decreased over-reliance on expensive traveler nurses, as well as, of course, decreased turnover, all of which, given today's workforce challenges, are so important. So again, I could go on and on, but that's the snapshot of now why I'm so excited to come to the table, but also what Banyan offers. Yeah, and the goal is for you to go on and on about these models because I, I think it is changing, <laughs> right? It, yes, it, it is. shifting, uh, and I want to dive into those, but before we do... I kind of want to hear your thoughts. You know, you talk to so many nurses, you work with so many nurses, you've been there, right? What are nurses in healthcare feeling today? And and, and what's it look like kind of on that front line of healthcare? I mean, I love nurses because they're, they are the heart of healthcare. Well, that's a great question. And, you know, I, I think the majority of nurses that are on the front line today are literally still reeling from the pandemic. You know, they're they're seeking a sense of returning to normal, right? Given the tremendous disruptions uh, to all aspects of care and work, as well as their personal lives that COVID created. 
for all sorts of reasons over the past couple of years, a lot of registered nurses have either quit inpatient employment or they've decided to retire much early than we would, we would have predicted. So now given huge increases in inpatient volumes and patient acuity levels, I mean, patients are sicker than ever before, right? Coupled with workforce shortages, there is a lot of unresolved burnout in a sense of you know, being overworked with by, you know, being held by registered nurses across the country more so than ever before. So today's nurses are working harder than ever. They're keenly aware that there is a shortage of nurses and they're looking to leadership for solutions to solve these overwhelming issues. In fact, I would also say that many nurses are actually frustrated with the current state you know, of their work environment, <laughs> right? You know, when you take a look at the data from various surveys, the work environment being untenable is a constant theme that nurses themselves report. So an investment by an organization in virtual nursing is, a, is leadership's deliberate attempt to address what nurses are most concerned about, right? It's the incredible amount of work, feeling overwhelmed by it, and not enough time to do hands-on nursing care and practice. And I think that's an interesting point. And we saw this on the administrative side as well. Mm -hmm. Many of the billers were afraid of technology and AI and all this that was going to replace them, they thought, right? Whereas now they're doing three people's jobs. So they're like, please come and replace the other three jobs I shouldn't be doing. Is that the same feeling with nurses? Is that like, hey, we need you know, more nurses and we can't get them. So could you provide some technology solutions like virtual nursing that you mentioned? You know, is, is that what you see? Is that like, they, they don't see it as a replacement, but they need these solutions to be able to manage the day to day. I think, I think it's important for um, everyone to understand what virtual nursing care models really are, right. So that they can appreciate what the opportunity is. Um, Again, there are an increasing number of companies out there that are trying to market virtual tech, virtual nursing as a technology solution. We at Banyan see virtual nursing as technology enabled staffing innovation. Hmm. And not only does this type of innovation provide direct direct support for in-room nurses, it also provides a whole new level of oversight, right? Um, it ensures quality, it ensures safety because you've got a se- you've got a separate set of eyes and ears that are that are also in the room with the patient, albeit virtually, to support the registered nurses who, in many cases, are spread very very thin. I think virtual nursing, you know, if you look at it as a holistic solution to what we're facing with respect to the workforce shortage, it actually transforms the traditional nursing model because it incorporates a virtual employee into the care team, right? Again, this isn't just a piece of technology. It's not a bell and a whistle, right? Mm -hmm. This is viewing a technology connected nurse as key to the inpatient care team. So it's a very unique concept, but, but doing incredibly well in so many organizations that are attempting to go that route. Interesting. So, I mean, you're framing it in a different way than I'd thought about it. Like one is, you know, augmenting the nurses, right? I mean, a lot of people talk about virtual nursing that way, right? Is it allows you to, you know, virtual sit 16 patients rather than one or two, right? Uh, You know, we hear a lot of people talking about that or, you know, but you're also saying like, hey, we might be able to do things that we wouldn't have just been able to do otherwise, right? Like, that's right. you know, where, okay, you know, we can't round to those 16 patients, but virtually we could, right? I mean, I'm just giving round numbers, right? But it sounds like that's, is that where you see most of these nursing models transforming is to kind of augment the 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 nurse to be able to do things maybe they wouldn't have been able to do otherwise rather than replacing it or oh now you need less nurses and so you know your hiring troubles are are solved (laughs) this is not this is not about eliminating nursing jobs this is about supporting nursing work right but it's the creation of a role in addition to the in in room role to support 
the complicated needs of patients that are assigned to nurses 24 seven. Given the complexity of care that clinicians are tasked with supporting as well as the market realities of the workforce shortages, honestly, I can't come up with an area where virtual nursing wouldn't even make sense to use. Uh, for example, while today, you know, we are seeing a lot of organizations uh, implement virtual nursing on general med surge units, you know, as a strategy to support, you know, their, their staffing model in a very safe and a very effective way. Well, boy, there's all sorts of other opportunities where you could use virtual nursing as well. If you start to think about this very creatively, why couldn't we, for example, use virtual nurses to admit patients while they're waiting for a bed, right, in the emergency department? to avoid that piece of work that typically doesn't happen until the, re until the patient is admitted to a bed somewhere in the organization? Or how about using virtual nursing as a model to support care transitions, not only between units, but also between care settings? Again, I, you know, I think that you know, we've, got a, we've got an opportunity here to really think out of the box as to how we can leverage this type of technology as core to effective care processes and core to supporting in-room clinicians so that they can do the work that they need and quite frankly want to do and eliminate the non-patient facing work from the registered nurses workday. Yeah, no, it's interesting. I think it's a change of mindset for many organizations and many leaders though, to be able to, you know, understand how virtual nursing is going to augment the nurse or going to enable them in a way, you know, that they can see the patients more. How have you experienced, you know, building trust that virtual virtual nursing options are mm. as effective as, as maybe the traditional methods? Yeah. Well, you know, it's a great question <laughs> because trust with any care model change, you know, for clinicians of any discipline, including nursing, um, is not easy to implement. Um, change is hard, right? Um, you cannot impose care model changes um, in, in any organization to any discipline, including registered nurses, in my opinion, without staff themselves being involved, right, in the design of the model, and more fundamentally, even understanding prior to the design what the model is intended to do. This is intended to help them with their work. It's not intended to substitute, right, mm. their jobs with an automated solution. The engagement, the transparency, the feedback that you've got to try to instill early on in the process will help create trust that for the registered nurses themselves so that they understand the investment is in the best interest of them. Again, this is important to uh, the trust question that you've asked, understanding that, that, that this commitment that an organization is making is not about job elimination, right? For inpatient roles, this is all about job support for those inpatient roles. And I think that's vital to building trust. Mm -hmm. I would also say, um, nursing practice and nursing professionals really pride themselves on being evidence-based, right? Looking at data to demonstrate what works and what doesn't. Well, at Banyan, we provide nurses and nursing leadership, let alone C-suites with both upfront as well as regular updates on the impact of the virtual model, what's it's mm -hmm. implemented on key quality indicators and falls and nurse engagement and job satisfaction, even patient satisfaction as well, let alone all of the financial measures, which is why at Banning, we also work very closely with nursing leadership teams and clinicians on the ground to make certain that there are not only adequate resources regarding effective design of the model itself, but also clear support for how the in-person staff and the virtual nurses will work together. Because let's face it, teams are used to being in front of each other in order to be effective. So this is a whole different paradigm. The integration of another team member who may not be physically present, but is vital to the team process, right? So we have to, we need to help staff both 
in the room, as well as those that are remotely, learn how to collaborate and participate with each other. Bottom line is nurses need to trust that this model is in their best interest, right? And our job at Banyan really is to help them get there, have them be excited versus reluctant or a little bit nervous about what this might mean for their workflow. Again, at the end of the day, I think the involvement in the design of the model, but also sharing what nurses themselves can do with the model once it's implemented, clearly can drive the level of trust that you need. You know, it's interesting when you talk about that and you address it a little bit, but what do you think is holding back these healthcare organizations mm. who haven't embraced virtual nursing and haven't implemented that? Like, you know, it's interesting when I look at telehealth, yep. there was that same feeling by many people. They're like, right. why haven't we adopted telehealth? It just makes sense. And and I, I looked at it and I said, well, it actually makes sense from the patient standpoint, but from the doctor standpoint, it doesn't provide any advantages. In fact, it's the same amount of work, the same reimbursement, the same, and, and, and there's some difficulty. So, you know, like to me, it was a value equation with the telehealth. But when I look at virtual nursing, all I see is upside. <laughs> like, like, I don't even look at that. Like, I don't know. Like, what are you hearing from people who, you know, is it just the, the way they've always done it? Or what are the things you're hearing that, you know, are holding these organizations back from embracing virtual nursing? Yeah. Well, there's a number of things, you know, because if, 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 if there weren't a lot of um, concerns, right, or at least questions, this model would be more widely in place than it currently is. I mean, on this moment here, I think we're we're still in the pretty early stages yeah, of the sure. you know the vast majority of systems even starting to think about this. There are some systems that are pretty far along in the journey, but for the most part, um, we're seeing more pilots right than full scale implementation across the board. Here's here's my thoughts as to why um, we're not seeing the level of um, embracing you know at this point in time that I think um, we're long overdue um, to, to see happen. First and for foremost, I do think there remains what I'd like to say a, a misguided hope in, in, in the minds of some um, leaders that today's nursing workforce challenges are gonna just magically dissipate over time, <laughs> right? You know? In other words, yeah. if we just sit tight, you know, and do a few things like we've done in the past, um, like, up compensation, for example, you know, or add some new benefits, that'll be enough, you know. Better recruitment. Right. That's right. Better that's right. Colleges. That's right. <laughs> you know, and I would tell you as a nurse leader, I've experienced several nursing shortages, you know, over the past several decades. And historically, those shortages have largely resolved themselves over time. Mm. But this shortage is different for all sorts of reasons, right? And unfortunately, or fortunately, it requires an entirely different set of solutions. Tactics that we've used in the past just aren't going to make it. If they were um, enough, we wouldn't be having this conversation today, right? C-suite yeah. commitment to address changes to the work, as well as the work environment itself, is what's needed. And that's exactly what nurses are asking for. But unfortunately, back to your question, why, is, why aren't more organizations embracing this? Well, this is hard work. <laughs> this is really hard, right? This is not a quick fix to get at root cause of what's getting in the way of effective work and the complexity of the work environment. So again, with the employment and the financial challenges that hospitals face, there is a significant need, I think, for healthcare organizations to be courageous as well as disrupt their organizational, their cultural, even professional norms, right? So that's that's one issue. You know, this 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 belief that, gosh, you know, if we just sit tight, this too shall pass. You know. Well, and what's interesting is I don't think the nurse voice was heard as much as it should. Like, you know, they didn't have the same table, you know, seat at the table with the C-suite, which right. ironically, it's kind of changing as well, because 
you know, travel nurses are so expensive and now the CFO cares, right? Like, yeah, yeah. It, it's sad to say, but that like now the CFO is like, no, this is a problem we need to solve because this is impacting our bottom line because the travel nursing expense, the, the, you know, the agency expense, et cetera. Right. So it, it's sad to say that the nurses couldn't get their voices heard in a certain way, but the CFO may, uh, I'll, I'll say that cautiously. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, I and mean, I think you're right. You're you're right. It is to say there there is a financial issue here. I mean, there is a financial issue, and you know, and it's for that reason that another hesitance to embrace in this um, in this domain might be finances. You know, and you know, hear me out here. Sure. Um, you know, you're right. Almost every system in the country right now is facing significant margin challenges. We know that, right? Yep. Um, and yet, and yes, committing to a virtual nursing model requires an upfront investment, right? Not only in technology, but also skill building and change management, which by the way, also takes time besides a money. But the cost of doing nothing, in my opinion, is far worse than the upfront investment that we're talking about here that addresses the very work environment that nurses say is driving them away from hospital-based employment. Again, data demonstrates the impact of virtual nursing on turnover, right? Yeah. Data demonstrates the impact on expensive agency use as well as quality and safety, which is also a financial you know, uh, savings as well. So said differently, um, as it relates to this virtual nursing opportunity, you either invest wisely on the front end or you're gonna to continue to pay for chronic workforce instability on the back end. I would say that's why at Banyan, um, part of our service is also to give a prospective return on investment, right? Um, analysis for any organization that's considering doing this because clearly People want to see what the impact of this investment might in fact be, um, not only what the front end investments are, but also the metrics that we need to be measure, to, to measure um, and demonstrate return on, again, quality, safety, but some very important workforce metrics like job, job satisfaction, turnover engagement, as well as decreased utilization of agency staff. Yeah. Um, I do want to mention one other thing as it relates to this whole financial conversation. Um, I know that every healthcare system in the country has some sort of digital health strategy, right? With significant technology investments that are earmarked on all sorts of things like enhanced consumerism and care access and quality and safety and clinical decision support and AI, the list goes on and on and on. Technology spend is very important, right, to manage very, very carefully. But given the clinical workforce shortages, I think allocating investments to support workforce needs has got to be prioritized right now. I would encourage CIOs and chief transformation officers to sit down and have solid conversations with chief nurse executives regarding the strategic technology investment opportunity that virtual nursing presents, not only for the nursing enterprise, but for the organization's bottom line. So I, you know, I don't know if, you know, you, you, you've got other questions about the financial piece of this. There is a financial, there is a financial cost up front. But again, when all is said and done, either you invest on the front end or you will continue to pay for this on the back end. Yeah. I mean, we've seen this over and over with technology and probably even before computers, right? That when you didn't invest in these better beds, mm -hmm. right? nurses probably didn't want to work in a place that had crappy beds because then they heard all the complaints from the patients. That's well, right. It's the same in the clinical documentation with all that's happening with AI automating the documentation. Once you've tasted what that's like <laughs> for the AI to do the documentation for you or to augment your documentation, et cetera, you don't want to go somewhere else, right? And that's I have a right. feeling that's the same thing with virtual nursing. Like once you've tasted 
what it's like to not have to do rounding to all these, you know, and getting your steps in and all this, right? Like, and being able to use technology to augment what you're doing. I, have, I imagine we're going to see a similar thing where they're like, if you don't have this, I don't want to work there. Well, frankly, you know, this is rapidly becoming a market differentiator, right? I mean, you know, th- th- this, this is, this is something that organizations need to think about, not only from the standpoint of the support for care delivery once you've got clinicians in the organization, but also an, ex- an excellent recruitment opportunity because yeah. today's employees, right, are looking for those organizations that are going to invest in them, right, and the work environment that they will be working in to make certain that the work environment is as effective and as supportive as is possible. It's a really strong job market right now for nurses. Yeah. <laughs> Let's face it, I mean, they can go just about anywhere. I've got several members in my immediate family that are currently going to nursing school and they are jazzed about all the opportunities that they know that they will you know, have in front of them. I, here's, what I, here's what I've said to them and here's what I would say to any registered nurse. I would advise, you know, any nurse that's getting started in their careers to literally look for an employer that is investing in its workforce with technology to create a healthy and supportive work environment. Employers should be investing in what it's going to take to support the complex work of the registered nurse versus presume that the registered nurse can figure it out by himself or herself. I would even recommend If I was a registered nurse asking during the interview process, what is your technology strategy for nursing? Do you have a commitment to virtual nursing as part of your strategy? That will demonstrate, right, to a potential employee whether or not this organization is serious about getting at the environment within which these folks are practicing. So uh, you're right. This is, this, in my mind, this is This is non-negotiable moving forward. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when you're gonna commit to it. Our belief is you wanna do this very, very carefully, very, 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 very thoughtfully, but very, very holistically to not only put in place the technology to support the communication, but the type of tough work that's needed to redesign processes, roles, right? And behaviors between remote employees and in-room employees so that they can work together and in a dramatically different approach to care. Interesting. Well, we always like to end these, uh, these podcasts with a, a little bit of career advice and, and I, you know, you, you gave some right there, right. As far as the technology, but I'd love to hear, I mean, when you first started mm. as a nurse, I, I can't imagine you thought that, you know, a few decades later, that was your words, not mine, uh, you know, <laughs> that you would be talking about virtual nursing, right? And that you'd be an advocate for virtual nursing. And, and this would be your job now to, is, is implementing these virtual nursing models. You know, what career advice would you give to a nurse as, you know, as they enter this workforce, you know, and, and, you know, is it embracing technology? Is it, uh, you know, what are some thoughts you have for someone who might be, or maybe just starting out as a nurse when it comes to technology or even a pathway for nurses? Boy, what a great question. And, you know, when I, when I think back to when I started my career, which was, you know, almost in the dark ages, you know, I mean, I, <laughs> <laughs> not that old, but okay. <laughs> uh, but I, I mean, it was it was a, it was a while ago. It was pre DRGs. Let's let, let's just start right there, oh, right? That's a nice one. Uh, that it's, so that that's a milestone, right? Yep. Um, what I what I personally loved about direct care delivery was the opportunity to to know that I was making a difference in someone's life. I knew it. I knew it. I could feel it. I could see it. Right. Yeah. And of course. I was all, it was also reinforced for me, not only by watching patients' status change, but also hearing from those around me, not only other care team members, but also the family of the, the patient or the loved one that was, that was being cared for. Um, in today's environment, because it's so complex, you know, it's, it's, folks are so um, sick <laughs> on the inpatient side, of um, our care delivery system. It's much harder now for registered nurses to have the time to create relationships with not only patients, but patients' family members, right? 
they are so busy trying to not only take care of the physical needs of the patient, but also to my prior point, the administrative functions that have exploded in terms of um, uh, being time consuming. So, you know, what, what I would say is, you know, going back to, um, you know, the conversation we were having a minute ago about if I was looking for a job, what would I look for? I would look for an organization that provided the types of tools and supports for me as a professional where I could maximize my time with the patient and the patient's family. And in today's complex environment, why wouldn't we rely on technology to be part of that solution? Hence, virtual nursing is a support for me, you know, as a bedside registered nurse, very different than, you know, what we needed several years ago, but, but now is in my mind, non-negotiable. You know, we've yeah. got to put this in place. We, 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 we know that many registered nurses are yearning for a return to a sense of being valued, right? And if a registered nurse doesn't have the time to develop and cultivate a relationship with a patient and or his, his or her family member, she or he is not gonna feel valued. So this is another you know, benefit of using technology to support professional nursing practice, right? relieving that registered nurse from the non-patient facing stuff that has to get done so that she or he has the time that she or he needs and deserves to take care of patients very holistically, which is not only beneficial to the patients and families, mm -hmm. but it's rewarding to them personally. Yeah, I mean, I think of my favorite nursing memory was uh, my son was in the hospital in, in Waikiki of all places. Mm. And uh, we were there and he turned out fine. Every, all was well. It turns out there was no issues uh, anyway. But we were there and, it, you know, at 2 a.m., one of the nurses comes in and he thought we were asleep. So he's being very quiet and he stuck the flashlight in his mouth and changed the baby's diaper while doing, you know, the flashlight in his mouth. Yes. I think about that, right? He thought I was asleep and I was watching and just enjoying his kindness, you know, and, and you see that and you think, man, do they have time to do stuff like that? Right. right. That makes right. a big difference for the patient and the caregivers right. that are there. So that's yeah. a really important message. Not only was your child cared for, but you were cared for as well right? Yeah. You were cared for, you were, you were assured that your child was in great hands. You were assured of that. And that's, that's really the essence of nursing is, you know, supporting the needs, right? And the health of others. Yeah. And we need to allow them the time to do that. That's and right. That, that's something that can't be measured in a HCAP score or no, <laughs> no, no, or heat us measure, right? So no, no, no. Excellent. Well, Carol, thanks so much for taking time to talk with us and share these insights and perspectives and, and let's get virtual nursing out there. Right. I mean, I, I think that's the, you know, we, we've, we've dealt with a lot, right. Uh, health systems, you know, had to chase the meaningful use money. They had to deal with COVID and, and now there's an opportunity to implement some things like virtual nursing. So thanks for sharing that. And you bet, you bet. We look forward to, you know, to, continuing on the journey with hospitals and healthcare systems all across the country. Thank you for the time to share my, my thoughts, my insights, as well as um, where I hope virtual nursing is headed, which is moving forward as aggressively as we possibly can move. Definitely. Well, I appreciate you sharing those insights and perspectives and thanks everyone Thank for watching and listening. If you want to find more great healthcare IT content like this, be sure to check it out at healthcareittoday.com or search for this EIO podcast by Healthcare IT Today on your favorite podcasting application. Thanks, Carol. Thank you. Thank you.